Right here it is right here, 2018. Scientists say they discovered a new human organ. Well, the only reason it's new in human organ, it used to be called epithelium, which is a layer of, of gush, basically. But it's, it's, it's all connected throughout the body. And now they call it the interstitium. And um, they found this throughout the body, both just below the skin and in the digestive system, respiratory, urinary system. It covers all your muscles, all your bones, all your um, tendons. Every single type of tissue that's separated from another type of tissue has a membrane around it. And that's all these are is membranes. Okay, listen to this now. Today's findings could eventually mean big changes for the way doctors confront cancers and other deadly diseases. A group of scientists believes it's discovered an elaborate path of fluid-filled tissues that makes up a previously unknown organ called the interstitium, found just below the skin and surrounding critical body systems. The whole thing is the interstitium. NYU lead researcher Dr. Neil Thies. It turns out that this wasn't just an isolated finding, it was all a single network of fluid-filled spaces that sort of ensheathed the body. Carrying 20% of the body's total fluid volume, the interstitium would be the body's biggest organ, what researchers call fluid-filled highways, acting as a sort of shock absorber around the digestive, respiratory, and urinary systems. Researchers say the fluid itself is rich in protein, and seems to flow to the lymph system. That may explain how tumors can spread so quickly through the body. And once we know how that happens in detail, then we can start targeting parts of that process um, to maybe inhibit tumor spread. If doctors could target this new organ, the opportunities could be endless. This could be huge because for once we're finally figuring out there's these connections in parts of the body that we didn't know exist before, and this could lead to treatments for diseases that up until now have just been mysteries to us. While some scientists have expressed skepticism that the interstitium is its own organ, already tonight speculation that med school anatomy books may soon include a new chapter. Tom Costello, N Tom Costello, NBC News. Now, that's correct because what lives in that interstitium is good bacteria. That is your immune system. I've come to realize it literally is your immune system. And when and that is bacteria. And th that bacteria is good bacteria. That's why probiotics are so critical. Because most people's digestive systems are missing their, their good bacteria. And that's why they're pre-existing conditions. They can't produce mucus. They can't produce enzymes. They can't produce catalysts that are only done by these specific bacteria. And they just said it is saturated with proteins. Well, proteins are the enzymes. Enzymes are the things that do the chemistry in your body. And the only way you get an enzyme is from a bacteria. Okay, so we got a new human organ. So what? Big deal. Interstitium. What's that got to do with anything? Well, it is your immune system. Literally, it is your immune system. A federal panel of elite scientists reported in 2016 focusing on the immune system. It could be the key to finding highly effective treatments for cancers. Now, they are, are, are I'm not kidding you, they're looking at it backwards. They're thinking that the, uh, the cancer cells travel through this interstitium to go other places to attack you in other places. That I don't believe is the case. I believe what's happening is the interstitium, which is supposed to be loaded with your membrane-bound bacteria, isn't there in every case. So if you have a certain type of cancer, like lymph node cancer, it could hit you anywhere in your body because you don't have the right bacteria. It doesn't matter where it is in your body, if you don't have the right bacteria, that particular place will be invaded. And some of them may be invaded easier than others. Like, um, I'm not going to go into details, but, you, you know, people get, take the case of a woman having breast cancer. And anybody can get breast cancer, but women primarily because of the mammary glands. And normally they say, well, you know, they could be susceptible to getting it in the other breast if they have it in one, and I say that's because they don't have the right bacteria in the other breast either. It's not because that travel, the, the, the bad cells travel through the body. The bad cells travel through the body all the time, all the time, all the time. Your body is supposed to not allow them to take root. That's the problem. If you don't have the bacteria in your body that says, oh, whoa, 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 whoa we got a problem, we'll go kill that thing, 
it's going to maybe it will head somewhere and stick. But that's the problem of the bacteria, not because they're just floating around, because they do it all the time. Okay, I'm going to just tell you right now, as far as I'm concerned, the interstitium is your immune system. And they're saying, why doesn't the immune system attack cancer cells? Well, it does all the time. It says, Millie asked on Instagram, why doesn't the immune system attack cancer cells? Our immune system does attack cancer cells, says Professor Tim Elliott, cancer researcher, UK-funded immunologist from the University of Southampton. It recognizes and destroys little cancers as they develop all the time. If we didn't have an immune system, which is the interstitium, then we would be developing cancers a lot more. Well, what is the interstitium? It's the membranes. It's the protective coating. It's the housing for our bacteria that creates enzymes and, and catalysts and mucus and all of the products we need to live. And if we don't have them, you're either not going to get the products you need because you can't absorb them correctly through your digestive system because you don't have the products to break them down, or you don't have the products to protect you and create that barrier wall within that interstitium by protecting themselves from toxins and so forth. And at the same time, they protect you, and they also make the chemistry to attack the attackers, such as these little cancer cells that are just floating around. It is your immune system, it is your interstitium. And they have found that fecal matter transplants gets immediately the bacteria you need into your gut, into your interstitium, and it goes where it's needed, and it can cure you of cancer. In a lot of cases, they're finding that's exactly what's happened. Fecal matter transplants. Let me see this. Four years ago, Paul Roos, this is the National Institute of Health. Fecal matter transplant in cancer management. Current and perspectives. Look at this. This is what they say down here. Uh, conclusions and perspectives. The role of the intestinal microbiota in relationship to carcinogenesis provided an unprecedented opportunity to explore new diagnostic and therapeutic application for cancers. Strategically, fecal matter transplant is the most direct method to change the composition of gut microbiota. It is the most direct method. It works very quickly and very effectively. Case reports and series reveal the potential of FMT in alleviating curing various cancers linked to intestinal dysbiosis and cancer treatment associated complications. Almost all cancers have an association to the gut because that's really where they start is the gut. It's not that the, the cancer causes the gut issue, it's the gut causes the cancer. Additionally, fecal matter transplant could enhance the e efficacy of cancer immunotherapy, thus remarkably affect clinical outcomes. However, there has not been clearly studied in a cancer management and large-scale randomized controls. Urgently required delineate the validity of FMT. These studies are urgently required, especially focus on the long-term consequences with the rapid progress of my, my gut microbiology. This was four years ago, and this was when I was screaming, and, and they just, nobody's ever done anything about it. FMT might become a promising therapeutic strategy for cancers in the near future. Four years ago, and they still not using it the way they should. And they haven't studied what bacteria lives in what sections of what types of tissue in the body. It's like glacial, the pace that they're working at this. Absolutely glacial.